Remember how the whole research field was banging their head against the wall to figure out how to get AI models to reason? Like we got all these chain of thought methods laying around just to realize that what we need is not creating a thinking guardrail for AI models, but let the model themselves fundamentally learn how reasoning works, which can naturally perform all these search methods. Another misunderstanding that came along is that when reasoning is present in test time compute, aka thinking before responding, we would assume that as long as it's reasoning, it'll be effective. Well, that is technically true, but when the reasoning isn't actually productive, the cost effectiveness might as well be a waste of compute. Last time, we looked at some pretty fancy techniques like thinking blocks and concept-based reasoning that boost performance, but those efforts into making LMs think in other formats doesn't really address the reasoning problem at all, because the problem called overthinking would actually cause more trouble than you would expect. But before we dive into it, with AI tools becoming essential for productivity but often delivering underwhelming results, mastering how you communicate with it is actually an important step for improving your work efficiency in 2025 and beyond. That's why I would like to share with you this free resource from HubSpot created in partnership with ex-meta data scientist and now full-time YouTube creator Tina Huang called the AI Prompt Engineering Quick Start Guide. This is a practical guide that explains how to transform your AI interactions from basic to brilliant and shows you how to craft precise prompts that deliver top-tier results every time. It has very detailed recommendations on how to get more out of AI tools through prompting, from teaching you an easy to use framework for structuring your perfect prompts, providing you expert techniques that enhances AI responses, to helping you master troubleshooting strategies when your AI outputs aren't hitting the mark. This resource has actionable advice that you can apply right away and the frameworks to make AI deliver consistent outstanding results for you. And the best part is you can download it completely for free right now. So if you are ready to stop getting mediocre AI results and start engineering your own perfect AI assistant with only prompting, check it out using the link down in the description. And thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Overthinking is a problem we all suffer. It is those unproductive thinking patterns that loop in your thoughts without reaching a solution. And according to this research paper, The Danger of Overthinking, the very basic form of it can be observed in reasoning AI models too. And the researchers categorize them into three distinct patterns. The first is analysis paralysis. This is where models get stuck in endless loops of planning and never actually perform any actions. So it will endlessly revise the plan at a very high level without actually starting to make a move. Sometimes this can also happen when there is a lack of a factual answer and the model doesn't realize that reasoning would not help to get to that answer at all because the model never actually learned the answer, which introduces the possibility of hallucination. The second is rogue actions. This is where models would just jump between several actions simultaneously, not waiting for feedback from their environment. It's kind of like when you give your code to Claude to debug it and somehow it decided to change your database structure if for some odd reason. The third is premature disengagement. This is where models would give up early, relying solely on on internal assumptions rather than checking external signals. Kind of like guessing the output of the function without waiting for the code to run. And the funny thing is, to address all these problems, you either throw more compute at it or remove the root cause of the problem, which is the reasoning capabilities. And obviously, the latter doesn't really make sense because it's like saying if you don't have a brain, then overthinking wouldn't be a problem. But I mean, the paper did show that reasoning models tend to overthink almost three times more than non-reasoning ones, so th there's that. However, we know that adding reasoning still boosts performance disregarding overthinking or not, so completely ditching it isn't a real solution. Luckily, they found something a lot more interesting. In their experiment, they found that smaller reasoning models overthink significantly more than larger reasoning models, and this is most likely due to the lack of intelligence which causes the smaller models to struggle with utilizing the extra reasoning tokens to navigate a given problem. Because like a rookie chess player, when you don't understand the board state completely, you would be prone to more short-sighted or panic moves. So in the case of DeepSeek R1 reasoning model, it would be more like a chess grandmaster that is able to comprehend the board and utilize the information accordingly. While there are still inefficiency to address and not anyone is capable of running a model which requires a compute setup that is worth a few million dollars and have it to self-discover reasoning through reinforcement learning. So to further ground this overthinking problem for smaller models, or even bigger models because why not, there are three methods researchers have come up with. The first is native function calling. This lets models directly interact with their environments rather than endlessly hypothesizing internally. So basically making a function call for an external process, like doing math on a calculator, instead of having LMs to do it internally. The second is selective reinforcement learning. Since most models aren't as powerful as DeepSeek R1 or V3, we cannot have it rely on itself to discover effective reasoning. So in the process of reinforcement learning, there needs to be a good balance of thoughtful reasoning with decisive action 
action taking. Which brings us to the third point, there needs to be good data selection for models to learn from. And this perfectly introduces the next paper, less is more for reasoning. I think it's already pretty obvious that a small set of high quality data is 100% better than a lot of data, disregarding of their quality, because as the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. But in reasoning's case, how much less data exactly? So in this paper, these researchers fine-tuned models for super complex reasoning tasks using only 117 examples, which is only 1% of the data compared to the baseline. And as for the result, in out of distribution scenarios, which are questions that LLM wasn't trained on, there's an improvement of up to 40.5%. And the secret sauce is using high quality reasoning templates that serve as cognitive blueprints for the model. The difference is like learning chess from watching 10 grandmaster games instead of 1000 random games with you needing to piece together the good and the bad. What's even cooler here is that the researchers got this reasoning improvements without using reinforcement learning, so no test time compute like how DeepSeek Zero was made. And it can outperform models trained on 100,000 samples. So I guess this is also how Claude is able to reason really well without using test time compute. Which makes you wonder if DeepSeek Zero's code start data trick was even the most optimal move, or if they could have gone leaner. And alongside less is more for reasoning, there's also the concept of less is more for reinforcement learning scaling. This research further builds on the idea of quality over quantity. When making or choosing the high quality reasoning data at scale, it's kind of hard to see what's the best for the model. So they introduced learning impact measurement, which is a systematic way to quantify good samples by looking at which sample contributes more significantly to a model's improvement. With this, they effectively reduce the data needed by around 84% and still be able to obtain the same performance, which eliminates the need for manual sample curation and makes picking data a lot more scalable. And by using less data, this also saves compute power. Another really interesting way to collect stronger reasoning data is this UPFT method, which stands for unsupervised prefix fine tuning. This idea is proposed in the paper, the first few tokens are all you need, and it is a bit more adventurous. So basically, if a model comes up with 10 different ways to solve a reasoning problem, the first few steps, which is called the prefix, often all look extremely similar. So they named this phenomenon prefix self-consistency. Then for UPFT, the researchers exploited this phenomenon and just grabbed these prefixes from the model's own generations and fine-tuned the model on just that without labels. This means the entire dataset can be synthesized and requires barely any human input, which can be pretty cool if we combine it with learning impact measurement that I mentioned earlier. But before that, does this even work? Well, at least from the look of it, it's insanely efficient. With no labels and no human preferences, it will still have around the same accuracy and also save a lot of compute by reducing up to 90% tokens needed for training. And they found that it works especially well if you train it on harder problems. So it sounds like it might just be able to solve the Ryman hypothesis if we just repeat this process infinitely along with a can of copium. Anyways, the reason why I decided to include UPFT even though it's very adventurous is that with all the previous methods, data sets are still relying on human intuitions to a certain extent. Rejection sampling, rewards for reinforcement learning, and data picking algorithms. But in order for models to surpass human reasoning, methods like UPFT sounds very interesting because we are making improvements without any human intuition as inputs. Maybe this is the infinite improvement glitch that we have all been looking for. And if you like today's collection of papers, definitely check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the juiciest papers that I don't have time to make into videos. So if that's your cup of tea, definitely go check it out. Or if you want to discover AI papers by yourself, I recently made a website that does it for you semantically, beating deep research and any other AI agents. You can also give this video a watch if you're interested. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, News Research, Kanan, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shaner, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, Poof and Inu, DX Research Group, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.